right, let's look at some options flows. 30 minutes into the bell, Kevin Green joins us with the S&P sitting basically right at six. Maybe a place for us to get cozy for a bit here, Kevin? Yeah, obviously we have a lot of pen risk there. We actually talked about it earlier this morning. That 6,000 level, not only when you're looking at the volume here today, but also from an open interest standpoint, a lot of uh, positioning on the call side as well as the put side. Now, what's actually very interesting today, Oliver, the top two, two traded contracts are the 6,000 puts sitting at around 79,000 contracts traded on the session and the 6,000 calls sitting at around 75,000 contracts on the session here today. So I would say the pen risk is definitely fairly high. If you're looking at the levels going into the close here, though, I would focus more on uh, obviously the 6,000 level, but we have this range between 6010 to the upside and 5590 to the downside here, where we could kind of squeeze for now. Uh, and I would be very surprised if we kind of get out of that range. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of activity, both to the upside or downside. I think we're really trying to at least just cross the finish line to hit 6,000, but nothing that's too aggressive uh, one way or another when it comes to trying to resolve this market. And it kind of coincides with the fact that we had that VIX up, uh, S&P 500 up, and we kind of talked about maybe we have a little bit of compression maybe some consolidation digest uh, these moves over the last, you know, two or three trading sessions. And it seems like that's going to play out for today. Okay. Uh, so we kind of get uh, pinned here at the even six, which seems to make sense. Um, how will you know if any of the sentiment turns? Like where's our kind of bar for thinking about if uh, the pressure flips? For today's session or just in general? In general. Well, I mean, right now it's still, right now we're still in a bullish uh, phase right now when you're looking at the e-mini S&P 500, if you're looking at the S&P 500, as far as positioning, it's still to the upside here. I haven't seen a lot of aggressiveness when it comes to buying puts. Uh, we haven't seen liquidity drop off. Actually, liquidity looks really healthy right now. So until we actually see liquidity move to the downside by judging the uh, e-mini S&P futures book depth, until we see that uh, or we start seeing more put activity being uh, you know brought to the market, it just seems like we're just going to kind of uh, consolidate. And I think that's just the best way to, to kind of put it. Now, I was actually incorrect last week, and I want to be able to correct myself here, okay. Oliver. Uh, this week is monthly expiration. Um, so we do have VIX expiration, which is going to occur on Wednesday. Tomorrow, I would suspect a fair amount of activity in the VIX options, both calls and puts, but most likely call side, uh, to be reflected in the market. I think that also could coincide with a small increase when it comes to volatility. We have the QYLD role that will take place on Thursday as well. So that could be something that does kind of cause some intraday volatility when you're looking at the NASDAQ 100. Uh, and then we have the expiration on this Friday, the, the options expiration. So uh, we do have some things on the calendar when it comes to the options expiration or at least options positioning this week. I wanted to just, just correct myself Thank you. From, from last week. Perfect. Yeah, great. Uh, good context. Let's talk some liquidity. Uh, things generally uh, pretty juicy, pretty fluid out there right now. Uh, I know you got a chart uh, for us. It comes from the CME. We like to check in on every now and then. Yeah, no, I mean, if you're kind of looking at liquidity, I haven't seen this type of expansion in a very, very long time here. When you're talking about that implied volatility or even the VIX being at such an elevated level and then seeing that drop off, that coincided with actually a lot of players or participants actually getting into the market as a whole here. So we've actually seen a pretty decent rapid expansion. I would say almost 2x uh, what we saw at the beginning of last week. Greater liquidity in this market, it makes it easier for us to be able to pick a direction. And usually that also coincides with the direction being to the upside here. And then it also allows us to kind of absorb maybe some selling pressure as well. Once liquidity starts to drop off in the market, that's where you get the erratic behavior of eight point, nine point swings in a matter of a minute or two minutes. That's really not good. That usually is the signal that you're at the top of a trend. Right now, we're just not seeing that. And, and I think right, it would be perfect from a technical standpoint, as well as from the position that you and I talk about on a daily basis, for us to just kind of hang out here for now, get over 6,000, um, maybe try to hit that 60, 25, 60, 30 level, digest this a little bit more, then get another catalyst reason for us to move higher. And that could be on the NVIDIA earnings, even though it has come up a little bit short in order for us to get like a lot of momentum after NVIDIA earnings, it might be something on our radar that could be favorable for a lot of these tech names, which is obviously going to drive the market. Okay. Uh, good stuff. Hold six. Establish a new range up here. I guess it seems like we shouldn't really be paying too much attention to chop unless we get below that, uh, into that level from uh, what, like last before the election, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the week before the election. That's where you start to get below like 5,800. 
Um, yeah. But your point is there's one more level nearer by at 5880 that uh, we, we want to hold on the way down to. Yeah, so 5880 is going to bring that negative uh, dealer pressure. And just for, for us to be able to kind of talk about this really quickly here, mm -hmm. when we're talking about those levels, we just mean that there's a significant amount of positioning there, either on the call side or put side. And we kind of look at the skew one way or another. And if it's going to be negative, usually that means in a positive gamma environment or a positive environment as a whole, that there could be potentially some support buyers stepping in. And if not, you're right, 5,800 was really kind of that key area where we uh, pretty much tested that 20 day moving average. We pulled back, pulled below there, and then we went down to 5,700. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we're kind of there right now. We also have to keep in mind too, when you're looking at uh, that, that three month chart, we're still kind of in the range of the wedge. And so we follow that wedge until that wedge officially breaks, either to the upside or downside. We had a little bit of a breakage to the downside, but it kind of quickly recovered. And now we're hitting that upside resistance point, and that's also kind of recovering too, right? So I think we just continue to fo uh, follow that trend until that breaks. All right. One yeah. way or another. I like it. It's held. It's worked. When it drifted out, it came back in pretty quick. So I'm, I'm cool with it. Let's, uh, let's keep rocking the wedge. Thanks, KG. Good stuff.